Hello everyone, this is Chala Dinkoy from The Repositioning Expert. Welcome to Tuesday Tea Time with Chala. Today we are talking about B2B buyers, those strange creatures, I was gonna say, those strange awful creatures that I once used to be so proud to be amongst them. And uh, now I'm on the other side of the table and now I'm looking for um, research to validate all the wonderful things that I'm telling my students about how to sell to them. So COVID has been such an interesting thing for large corporations, big, small, every kind of corporation. So I'm always interested in throughout, you know, the March and, I, and from March on throughout, I've been looking at research that's been coming out. I've been talking about trends to help you to try to pivot your business and to try to figure out what to do to make the maximum of you know take the maximum opportunities of what covid world is offering you in your space hello deanna okay so what this research is about is b2b buyers and how they're behaving after covid how their behavior has changed after covid and it's a um it's a global study so what's interesting is that they've looked at different regional differences between di different countries and um, different parts of the world. And it's done by a company called Pros, which is a digital marketing company. And it was done with 210 buyers all over the world. So here's some of the interesting things is that because of COVID, the number one complaint that B2B buyers have with their current vendors is speed of responsiveness and delivery of product. So 35%, that's the number one complaint, is the speed. And you can imagine, I mean, I experienced this in a B2C context uh, where you know I ordered something and unfortunately, of course, it was from the US and it didn't come for months and it was because of everything that had happened to change the, you know, the, the delivery, the FedEx they had imposed um you know a, a customs on a sports bra that i never ever used to get and apparently they're digging everything so i got, it was delayed for months so you can imagine that that's their number one complaint um the other complaint is the inconsistent and variable pricing during covid and that was like the number two complaint was 30 percent, and you can understand why uh, <laughs> And the next, I'm getting so many texts, I'm just I'm so happy to get them, but I have to um, concentrate on you guys because it's Tuesday tea time with Chala. And then um, inventory transparency is, is number three. So I thought that was really interesting. They're complaining about not being able to see what's in the inventory of the suppliers that are supplying to them. So imagine if you're a supplier of any sort to a corporation and you're watching this, you should know that that is such a competitive advantage that you can offer them if you could offer them that kind of transparency either through a like, real-time app. I know these things like are huge things to ask and the building of systems requires a lot more um, you know, agility for the larger you are. It's impossible to do, like to, to change the direction of a cruise liner. It takes like hours, just like what Titanic, you know, they saw the, the iceberg, but they weren't able to um, steer in time to avoid it. So it's really slow to move these things, to create these visibil visibilities around what the buyers are asking for. But if you could, you would be at such a wonderful advantage. And here, <laughs> here's the problem, is that only 18% of B2B um, buyers said that they have no problems with their current vendors. And that's during COVID. Uh, so it's it just tells you that the market's been really volatile. It's been crazy to try to do business, to try to get business, to try to get um, supplies, and the vendors are not able to react in time. They're not able to uh, guarantee prices, and they're not able able to uh, show you know uh, transparency around their inventories, which is making the majority of B two B buyers unhappy because only eighteen percent are happy with what they're getting. Uh, and they have switched 70% of buyers, B2B buyers have switched a vendor, changed a vendor due to the environments um, brought about by 
COVID. And the number one reason why they've switched is because of price. 40% have switched because of price. And the number two is if the supply has not been available, they switch. So it's almost, it's almost as big. So it's 39%. Hey, Vesna. And then the third one is budget, better digital purchasing experience. So remember I had told you all about these trends where there was like, you know, three digit increases in, um, you know, going to digital purchasing, going on to the number one increase was in the going to the one click kind of Amazon type of buying. If, if vendors have that available on their own site. And the sad, sad thing is the no rep purchase, the like eliminating the rep purchase has gone from 29% before COVID to 37. And in, that's globally and in North America is 47%. So people just want a digital buying experience, even if they're giant corporations, B2B, even if uh, you know, they're, um, they've always worked through reps. And it's really amazing because you know, people don't wanna see reps anymore. Uh, especially during this some in most cases they're not even allowed to see reps because there's so many stringent rules to get to meet with them face to face um, a client just told me about what she's trying with her and her husband who's a business owner and they're um, ordering virtual lunches so with whichever part of the world or country the person is their prospect is they're ordering like through Uber Eats or some sort of delivery service and then they're having it themselves and they're sharing this lunch virtually while having a meeting on Zoom, which I think is a great you know, way. I've, I'm willing to hear whether it's working for her or not, but I think it's great. And uh, so the no rep purchase, you guys, has gone up um, to in North America, especially 47%. That's almost half. So I'm not surprised that sales reps are really trying to struggle with coming up with how to provide value when they can no longer be the conduit to the actual purchase or to the purchasing decision. So, I mean, there's so many things that around your marketing now that it makes it more important for your content to be that conduit and for you to develop your capabilities and differentiators around their big problems. Remember, listen to the pain, listen to the pain, listen to the pain, because the pain is gonna tell you where to get them, where to specialize, where to convert them. And it seems like the pain is around, you know, the speed and the consistency of delivery and the price. And, you know, the transparency to see what you could deliver for them. And, um, yeah, so that's that's the study, the global study of the 210 buyers done by pros, and it is a COVID B2B buyer study. I'm gonna be blogging about this in my Thursday newsletter, so look out for that. And in the meantime, if you're selling to corporations, just take note of everything they're asking for and become an invaluable source of help to help them to get these things that they're struggling with because not, I mean, everybody's struggling, but they're struggling too. And they're trying to do this all in the same time they're worried about their job, all in the same time they're worried about having to juggle multiple priorities or going through a learning curve because they've now had responsibilities added or changed. Um, one of my other clients is doing work around this change within functions and helping companies uh, and industries deal with this overload of both new responsibility and just sheer just hours of responsibility to try to get them back up to productivity. Because uh, you can imagine if you're loading a horse and you're overloading a horse, that horse isn't gonna ride pretty as far as it did or as pretty as it did. So these are <coughs> my big, oh, this is the right time to take a sip, you guys. And know that cough is not because I'm sick or anything, so it all's good. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys. And please add your comments. We're gonna be getting back to uh, doing lots of interviews. We're gonna be getting back to lots and lots of uh, content for you. We've got lots planned. We have another launch date of September the 14th for our live launch of our nine day extravaganza like we just did. We just finished a couple of weeks ago 
on the uh, B2B Elevator Pitches Bootcamp. I can hardly wait. It's gonna be the second time around for us and we are so excited to add everything that we learned and everything that we know to help you guys better. So for those of you who enjoyed it and went through it, you can come back through it again or you could tell your friends. So we're gonna start um, marketing for that hard and so as a result, you will be enjoying the new content. I can't wait to see you guys again. All the best. See you guys, bye.